back. Hello. Let's see. Hello. How are you? Thanks for being here. <laughs> I'm good. We just, we, I mean, we literally just rolled in from uh, being out in Southeast Iowa for the day. So it's good to be here because you know, Iowa, it's 75% vowels and hundred percent awesome. <laughs> yeah. For those listening, uh, she is pointing at a sign that does say Iowa is 75% vowels, 100% awesome. It's not something I didn't know that, but now, now I do in some sense, I always knew. Uh, and don't well, confuse it with Ohio. <laughs> it's happened. It's happened. All right. Um, well, thank you so much for being here. It is now 8.33 p.m. on the evening of November 4th, 2020. The election was yesterday, and we're going to talk about it on Rock Hard Caucus. <laughs> My name is Justin, and I am here tonight with Evan and Chuck. Hi there. It's been quite a while since I've been on, I think, hasn't it? Uh, Yeah, I didn't check the spreadsheet, but it has it's been. It's been a at least a month, yeah, but I'm glad I could make it for this one, because this, yeah. uh, this is a doozy here. This is going to be... <laughs> yeah, glad to be, be here one. for the dawn of a new era. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Truly transformational change in American politics. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, we don't really have a roadmap for the episode, but there's plenty to talk about. The most important election of our lives was yesterday. Evan, I think it seems like you have a, a bit of an optimistic outlook on this. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> Where yeah. did you get that idea? <laughs> <laughs> well, what you were just saying, you know, a transformational moment. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Oh, true. Yeah. Biden's going to unite the country. And by that, I mean he's going to rehabilitate all of the shitty right wing people that, they've, <laughs> you know. You're reaching across the aisle, shake some hands and whatnot. Yeah, I I think that Evan and I have a bet going that may or may not have been mentioned on the show before, but I bet, gosh, probably at least a couple of years ago that Trump was going to be a two-term president. It was like 2017, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> like it was like it was, shortly yeah. after the inauguration. Yeah, it was it was a while ago. So uh, that's is my explanation as to why I decided to cast my ballot for Mr. Trump uh, when I went to the polls uh, <laughs> yesterday because I don't want to pay Evan $15 and my vote is worth <laughs> about that much. So I really yeah, had to sure. just, mm-hmm. I had to dig deep and listen to my heart and uh, I had to try to protect my investment and it worked out pretty well in the state of <laughs> Iowa. Um, we're now officially a red state. If you guys haven't heard, <laughs> yeah, it's not like we didn't already sort of know that. Well, it's always yeah. kind of funny to me <laughs> that people consider Iowa a swing state anymore. Yeah, I wasn't considering Iowa a swing state until like, I don't know, October of this year. <laughs> and then Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that notion went that away. Turned out well. <laughs> yeah. Jesus, yeah. Also I checked my spreadsheet check. I believe the bet was for twenty dollars, uh Steam game. Uh so Ah shit. All right. Lots yeah. of spreadsheet talk tonight. People are going to oh, be thrilled okay. <laughs> to hear about our spreadsheets. <laughs> That's right. I did vote in person the other day. Um, I actually requested an absentee ballot that I completely forgot that I requested. So I had to dig through my mailbox through all the election junk because my mail just gets put through a, like a slot on my porch and goes into a cardboard box. And I found a bill that I forgot to pay in there also. So that was nice. Uh, but then I also did find my absentee ballot, which when I got to the polls was... They told me that it was actually just the request form, so I got to just (laughs) throw it in the garbage and and vote. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, I almost forgot to fill out the back of the ballot. I marked my choices, and I got up, and I was in line, and I got a quick glance at the gentleman in front of uh, me's ballot, and I noticed there was stuff on the back, and I'm like, oh, right, yeah, I better... I better go back and finish this thing. (laughs) Yeah. So I just kind of slogged back to my Did you copy off of this man? (laughs) <laughs> you copied the fucking you copied his answers <laughs> shut up dude that's tampering or something uh, but I, I slogged back to the booth and I f- finished filling out my ballot and I got back in line but it was pretty quick uh, it was in and out within five minutes I mean I went pretty early in the day and uh, there was a, a few people there but yeah knocked it out and just kind of went home and hung out <laughs> and waited how did you vote on the uh, back page 
Assuming that it's the same. On, on my back page, it was like all the Supreme Court vacancies, yeah. uh, not vacancies, but like retention. Yeah. I voted for all the good stuff is what I voted for on the I back. voted against retaining <laughs> all of them, as, yeah. as yeah. you should do. Me too. And also yeah, against yeah. the Constitutional Convention thing, yes, which is absolutely. just like an... It's like they were all appointed by Republicans, and like our state government is run by Republicans. So if they have a constitutional con- constitutional convention, then ain't, ain't shit good happening. <laughs> like, no, that'd, that'd be fun. It would be fun because there's no. It's just like a bill. It's like a bill that's like every ten years that has mm-hmm. to show up on a ballot, and it's like there's no reason. There's no like actual like amendment that they're like specifically looking at. It's like we're just gonna have a constitutional convention, and we're gonna decide if we want to do whatever the hell they want. Yeah. If we want to tune this thing up. Yeah. Yeah. I I believe it's part of the original Iowa Constitution is that every ten years, uh, we get to vote on amending it, and we never ever have since what eighteen. 18- Mid eighteen hundreds. When was Iowa? Be- like when did it become forty eight? I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. But I, I love the back of the ballot because I could just fill in like a hundred bubbles that just said no next to them. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really getting into the spirit there. Mm-hmm. Doing your civic duty. Mm-hmm. I was just looking over the results here. It looks like uh, we retained every single judge in the state of Iowa. Yeah, yeah. But uh, we were not doing the constitutional convention again. And that lost, like, pretty handily. That has never mm-hmm. happened, I don't think. <laughs> no, it has not. Uh, it looks like 407,000 votes for yes and 971,000 for no. So uh, overwhelmingly, Iowans do not want burner. to amend Easy. the Constitution. Yeah, I haven't looked at the Iowa Constitution, but if it's, like, based on the uh, original one, then, I don't know, maybe maybe we should have voted yes. <laughs> I'm sure there's like plenty of amendments that could be made, but uh, the people who would be amending it would be, you know, Bobby Kaufman, <laughs> who yeah, won I his think re-election. The yes, the compromise is still in there too. <laughs> Maybe we should have voted yes on that one. Bobby Kaufman, he was the uh, Republican who will literally run over your dog, right? Yeah, that was him. Yeah, I don't think we mentioned that, but no, I don't think that came up on the show because it was pretty recent. Yeah, but this guy like literally ran over a dog in front of like some like oh yeah lawyer or that. something. Yeah, and one he, of like, his neighbors. Yeah, and then he didn't stop. And then like the lawyer guy stopped, and like there was like a kid like mourning his his dead dog. Actually, he was saving uh, that kid from getting its face bitten off by the pit bull, <laughs> which now you can own in Denver, Colorado. Apparently, yeah. So yeah, Republicans will literally kill your dog and not show any remorse for it until it becomes public knowledge. Yeah, so if you're a pediatric uh, pediatric plastic surgeon and you're looking for uh, new opportunities, uh, look no further than the city of Denver. <laughs> uh, yeah, Bobby Kaufman, uh, state representative from Iowa District 73. Uh, he was up against Lonnie Polkrebeck this election. You guys know who that is? He was a no. former sheriff, wasn't he? Yes, he was the Johnson County Sheriff until he decided to run for a state house and lose. So the the Democrats put up a cop to beat Bobby Kaufman and it didn't pan out. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much the story of the working. election, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> it seems like a losing strategy. It's like so the bipartisanship far. shit it, like didn't really work. <laughs> it's like eh, they should have listened to our last episode critiquing their ads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think by then it may have been a little bit too late. Yeah. Chuck, you mentioned looking at the other guy's ballot. Um, did you guys <laughs> uh-huh. have like the secrecy folders at your polling place? Nope. Yeah, well, I, we didn't I, have I them. I went either. absentee. Yeah, first you time were ever. by mail, right? Yeah. Which I will probably do that for, like forever. It's not that hard. It's like really, at least in Iowa, it's not bad. Yeah. I was just too despondent to care about voting, so I didn't go through with the process, you know? We had the pretty classic uh, like plastic uh, sort of dividers at a table that just, you know... It's like three sides and a top on it, and you just kind of <laughs> fill it out there within the privacy of your little cubby hole, and then walk it over to the machine. Yeah, I was expecting the little folders, you know, so when you bring your ballot from the, the your cubby area to the scanning machine, the shredder, I didn't want anybody to see, like, how I voted. I didn't want them to see what I wrote, what I wrote in for every office. <laughs> 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 for every oh I, I know the one <laughs> but that's uh I, i'm kind of curious now <laughs> yeah well i just wrote it but i'm gonna uh, respect your secrecy you know <laughs> he wrote in hillary clinton for everything <laughs> yeah no I, I wrote in just all capital letters bernie and like bigger just than the, all of the lines just the and squares. <laughs> yeah just <laughs> for every office <laughs> 
Did you actually do that? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. That's how we can still win. <laughs> I left a lot of stuff blank because it was like... No, I, I mean, I wouldn't... Yeah, it'd be funny. Like, I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, I mean, in, in my district, like, a lot of stuff goes unopposed. Um, I don't really give a shit about the uh, house race, which... Uh, <laughs> Maybe I should have a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think we that uh, blew that by? prediction. <laughs> we blew that prediction. <laughs> yeah, I guess maybe we can get into uh, how, how well we did. <laughs> <laughs> eh, wait, one? Well, no, we got two out of four. Uh, yeah, in, in terms of predicting correctly, yes. Yeah, actually, the I don't think the other one, the Rita Hart loss has been... <laughs> etched in stone yet. no i don't, I don't God, think they've that was called so two close or in johnson yet. county yeah it's like way yeah it, it might be she could still pull it out but mm-hmm. it's incredibly close what was it like 400 votes was the difference it was like for a, her? A 200 votes or something jesus last time i saw it yeah on the uh on the secretary of state's website right now it's less than 300 apart wow it's a yeah. photo finish <laughs> well i wish stella's mom the best of luck <laughs> Yeah, you'd think, you know, having my friend's mom be the candidate would be more motivating <laughs> for me, but... <laughs> not not enough, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I believe the last time I gave any kind of prediction on the podcast, I th- at that point, I was thinking Biden would maybe win Iowa, but no, not <laughs> not even close. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he I thought he maybe had like a puncher's chance, but I I don't know, man. I was so I have I drove to Ames on Sunday and on the way there, you know, in the past there's a, you see the occasional sort of you know, Trump thing on these like rural properties where they be, you know, like houses that are kind of out of the way or, you know, farm properties or whatever, but basically every property that we drove by on the way to Ames had their own kind of like Trump shrine that was Mm. on their property. Uh, (laughs) Sometimes it was like the the most common one was just a cluster of signs where it was just like a big Trump sign. And then every other, you know, Republican that was running, I saw ones that were massive that covered the side of a barn. Um, I saw big flags with different sort of Trump caricatures on them. I think I might have mentioned the Rambo one. Have you guys seen that one? Uh, I don't remember that. It's like Trump dressed up as Rambo. Yeah, so it's Trump as Rambo, and he's uh, has Rambo's body, but it's his head, and he's wearing like the the red sort of um, bandana, and <laughs> he's like glistening, and he's holding a flamethrower that's uh, shooting fire, and there's like a fighter jet behind him. I saw that one a few times on a couple of different flagpoles. Um, I saw stuff that was just like a uh, like a busted wooden pallet with like a flag painted on it and like a Keep America Great sign. But pretty much every single property I drove by had something. And I got that same sort of feeling just for the state of Iowa about how I felt back in 2016 when I saw that video like two weeks before election day or maybe even less than that of the like booby trapped Trump sign compilation where it was like some guy that like had put razor wire on his sign or like electrified it or something. And it was just his outdoor camera. Like, I don't know if it was staged or not, but like catching people getting injured, trying to steal a sign. And that was kind of the moment that I was like, ah, shit, like this is psycho shit. This guy's going to fucking win. But like (laughs) driving through Ames and seeing all that, it just, it or two Ames rather just squashed like any thought that I had of, it even being close in Iowa and in typical Democrat forum, we had record turnout in the state of Iowa for everybody, yeah, yeah. especially <laughs> Democrats. And they still got fucking rolled across yeah. the fucking board. Yeah. Uh, full red, you know, presidential Senate. Uh, yeah. They it lost... wasn't close either. No, uh, they lost the first district for sure. Second district, probably uh, fourth is staying red, obviously like sure. They the no kingdom. There. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Although no longer uh, King dumb because of Steve King. Oh, yeah. No <laughs> thanks true. to him. I, I think that was the funniest election day tweet was like Steve King tweeted, I like enthusiastically voted for Trump, but I could not bring myself to vote for the <laughs> House of Representatives seat. <laughs> yeah. It's like Feenstra's a fucking step too far. Like, <laughs> Well, you know, Steve King, he got shafted. He got <laughs> the he got local canceled. Republicans just fair. ruined him. Yeah. I wouldn't vote for the guy either. Cancel culture has gone too far. Yeah, if I got punished for my racism and then replaced by some like 
grinning freak. <laughs> I'd be reluctant to vote for the grinning freak as well. <laughs> yeah. Trump had the racist bona fides that he was looking for, but Feenstra just was just not not enough. Speaking of turnout, nationally, what what was it that I saw that voter turnout was like 67%? It was up like 17 to 18% from 2016? Yep. Yep. Right. And Joe Biden to tell you, he's won more votes than any candidate in history, <laughs> which they're going to they're going to oh, trot that heart. out. They're going to trot yeah, yeah. that out so hard, Fuck despite yeah. like <laughs> losing basically every demographic or not losing, but like losing ground on like every demographic yeah. Yeah. and like having like you'd think that, oh, yeah, like biggest turnout in like 100 years would be a Biden landslide. But like, no, it's like the absolute most squeaker of victories that you yeah. could possibly like, have yeah. if it stands like right. <laughs> Which, I mean, I think it will, but, like, what the fuck? It, it's this, possible it'll be exactly 270 electoral Yeah, it's going to be, like, 271. <laughs> <laughs> like, it oh, literally, man. I I would, I would, I'm going to put it at 271, like, 268 right. or whatever. <laughs> it's going to, it's, it's so, it's very funny to me to watch, like, this come down to, like, a rec center in Michigan with pizza boxes covering the windows <laughs> as people are counting ballots. Oh, yeah, and yeah. then, like people counting ballots in the city of fucking omaha that's gonna like tip the scale one way or another you know whether it's a tire i mean it's as of right now it's 850 right now i believe uh are we still waiting on nevada is it or what are we waiting on still out west nevada and arizona haven't been called yet but both are leaning biden and that's all you would need to to lock it up right so as of right now there's still it's like you just said it's looking like it's going to be a biden win but i really don't it, it's obvious. I, mean, I don't even need to say this, but like the transfer of power is going to be an absolute fucking nightmare. Like they're going to fight tooth and nail for these mail-in ballots to get thrown out. They're going to try to get as many thrown out as they can. They're going to sow as much decisiveness as they can in people about this. And it's just going to, the, the longer it goes on, the more riled up, you know, his base is going to get and the more pressure they're going to be putting on people for, you know, investigating this and yada, yada, yada. And that kind of got me thinking too. So how, how much time, you know, should Trump, you know, lose. How much time does he have left in office until Biden's inaugurated? About two months. Yeah, January is it the twentieth? Yeah, January twentieth. It's my mom's yeah. birthday. Right. And they got me thinking today about all the people that he might pardon in that timeline. You know, because <laughs> that's going to you know, be good shit. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be a lot of really like this. It might be the best time for like posting and you know content the next couple of months here for sure. Especially if you know he's just waiting to leave office. I was saying the the best thing would be if Trump just pardoned every single felon in the entire country and then just goes, that's what Joe Biden wanted. Like, this is (laughs) this is the country that Joe Biden wanted. Hell yeah. I would be in order. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh, God. I mean, that would make him probably one of the better presidents. That would make him. Yeah, that would be probably the best thing that any president has done for like fucking my entire life. So. (laughs) cementing his legacy i really think though that he's i think that part of him is very relieved i think to to potentially be done i mean he got what he wanted he got to be the most famous man in the world for four years i mean there's nobody you know globally that's more talked about and like more in the fucking spotlight than the president of the united states so he got to be the most popular guy in the world um he helped his buddies get rich he helped his family get rich the dude can literally just be done and just go back to doing whatever the fuck he was doing before yeah. this. He can just and his get, cult. His yeah. cult isn't going away. No, it's not They're going there. away at all. Yeah. They're yeah. like oh, obviously Don Junior. <laughs> Don Junior, twenty twenty four. You know, uh, Ivanka. You know, twenty fucking twenty eight. Like it's these people aren't oh, going to go away. I don't. I, I, there's so many of my liberal friends that are like, oh, the nightmare is about to be over. No, it's just beginning. Like this is <laughs> the, the everlasting effect that Trumpism has had on the American psyche. It's, it's going to last a generation. Like, it's, I mean, we're still going to be having fallout from this guy. I mean, just the QAnon freaks, for one, just like that Yahoo, like Sarah Palin conservative bullshit that helped kind of get him, like the Tea Party shit kind of helped him. Like, that, that was the seeds getting planted. He watered the fuck out of that, and it's blossomed into a big, like, palm tree with turds coming out of it. And <laughs> he's just, I mean, some of the people that I know that just seeing how they've changed 
you know, when he became president, it's, I, I just, I don't see that going away, especially if it's going to be like as contested as it is with these mail-in ballots. Like I've, I've been saying that it's going to be close. Biden's probably going to edge it out and it's going to come down to these fucking mail-in ballots, which it is. And they're going to fight tooth and nail to get as many thrown out as they can. So even if they don't succeed in doing that, which they probably won't, well, I don't think they will at all. <laughs> that's going to just, it's, it's going to sow doubt. Uh, for these people's minds the rest of their lives. I mean, all these these drain the swamp people. Like, oh, this is the swamp. The swamp's refilling, and they're mm-hmm. fucking. They're trying to get Biden in there. And they're sort uh, of right. <laughs> yeah. So I just it's it's not over. It really has just begun. Obviously, things aren't going to change because Biden's a fucking Republican. He's going to surround himself with Republicans when he is likely in office. He's going to work with the Republican-controlled Senate. Very obviously, if he makes it through his entire term. It's not all sunshine and fucking daisies. I mean, <laughs> no, I no, get it. I, orange man bad, orange man bad, but just uh, I don't know. This I'm is pretty sure we're all in agreement that things are going to get a lot worse before they ever of get course. better. Yes, oh, yeah. they kind of is... have to. It's like a fucking necessity for things to get better. Yeah, the way things are looking I mean, now, like this is one of the worst possible outcomes. <laughs> I what I was yes. thinking. Like, I almost like, God damn, like it almost would be better if Trump won. Yeah. Honestly, like just I mean, as far as like long term future of this country, like I, I don't know. I mean, that's way too early to say. But like, even a Biden presidency with the Republicans controlling all of Congress is like that is a nightmare. Like his entire career yeah. has been working with these people. Yeah, you think Biden yeah. is gonna fucking like weather this storm? Like you think that like Biden is going to in the four years that he has? Like, is he gonna make a goddamn dent in? The Republican opposition. Does he no. want to? No, he doesn't want <laughs> to. Probably not, no. <laughs> like, we only have absolutely inept fucking corrupt Democrats and bloodthirsty corrupt fucking Republicans. What could go wrong? What could go wrong? <laughs> yes, now we have Joe Biden, who can't remember his children's names, is going to be at the helm, figuratively, of course, but I just, man, now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, you're right, like... That this is probably one of the worst case scenarios, <laughs> <laughs> and plus the, the court of is fucking many bad. Now. I mean, there is yes. no good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, there wasn't really a, a possible good future out of what we were no. being thrown into. Not in the next four years. <laughs> no. So I got a question for you guys. Um, do you think that? I mean, I think we agree that. Had had he not faced obstruction the whole way there and faced hit jobs left and right, Bernie probably would have won this election more handily than Biden. I think we can agree with that, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, we have the the advantage of this just being. I mean, there's no evidence to the contrary, so I'll say like unequivocally, uh, Bernie would have won, <laughs> right? Because you can't prove otherwise. I would say I would put one disclaimer on that would be like if the democrats actually put support behind well, yeah, him yeah, <laughs> which is like that, you know? he could have maybe like obviously like you know it would have just taken like elizabeth warren like reading the signs and dropping out when a normal person would have dropped out i mean obviously we don't know why well, she that's, didn't but it's part of it but i mean you also had obama aligning everybody else to fucking well right dump out yeah. at the same time and get and behind COVID. joey <laughs> But even if Obama did that and Elizabeth Warren dropped out, like Bernie probably still would have like won Super Tuesday and would I have been so. on path. But anyway, like they would have not put their support behind Bernie anyway. No, like, no, no, no. Which is they why would I have rather if, he lost. If, yeah, 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 yeah. No, but yeah, Bernie's actual fucking message would have like yeah, hundred percent won. You have somebody that's actually Obviously. offering uh, something tangible. Like, there's a fucking plan. There, there's there's something that people can be hopeful about to go and vote for that's something that they can change their lives. But, I mean, with, with Biden, it's just like, it just reminds, it's it's Hillary again. It's like, well, we don't want Trump. You know, if, if you don't vote for me, Trump's going to win and you don't want more Trump or you don't, you know, the Democrats have shown once again that they just sort of treat these elections like a fucking checklist of demographics. Like they don't, they don't see fucking people as But they as did a pretty beings. bad job of that. Exactly. Yeah. They exactly. have, <laughs> they have do that right. quite yeah. literally nothing to sell except for outrage. Like, yeah, orange man bad. That's it. <laughs> You saw that Trump uh, improved his turnout among every demographic except for white men. <laughs> yeah, so th- yeah, you can thank us later, everybody. White That's men right. actually won the election for Biden. Um, uh, yeah, white women do better. Uh, voted for Trump more this time. <laughs> Sorry, girls. Ah oh, man, I'm just kidding. No, it's just like <laughs> it's true though. Like that's. The- <laughs> 
<laughs> no, uh, it is true. Like, you know, it's like re- Democrats always are like, I just cannot believe that a Republican would vote against their own fucking self-interest. It's like you are someone who claims to be a like lefty persuasion of some kind. Yeah, yet you are explicitly you are voting. You are telling everyone to vote explicitly for a right wing economic program. Like yeah. there is no way, which is what the Democrats have been selling since Clinton, obviously. But like they don't understand what their party is, and they don't want to know because if they found out, then it would it would disturb them. Because, like, it is pretty disturbing not having any hope. Like, there's no fucking <laughs> silver linings, like, for us. It's just, like... No. God damn. I, I don't know. It's like we're living... I don't know. I've said it before, but it's, like, we're basically living at, like, the collapse of a empire, and it's kind of like the USSR, where, like, everyone knows that all of, like, official po- political outlets are just, like, lies, corrupt. Like, everyone knows it's just bullshit. It's just, like, all pretense. But they just go on with their lives because, like, they know that they can't change anything. They know they don't have any power. So they're just going to go on with their measly lives and just put up with it. Mm -hmm. Or they're just going to construct elaborate fantasies (laughs) to make it seem like everything is okay. Which is, the Democrats are extremely... I mean, the whole Russiagate thing, that's exactly what it was. Yeah, Russiagate was QAnon for fucking liberals is all I used to blanch at that, but... It's fucking true. <laughs> I mean, it's not that, yeah, like, I mean, the, I don't know. It's, they did, there was the Russia thing, but it's like using that as like the issue that lost the election. Give me a fucking break. Yeah, right. seriously. And it's, that's awful though. Like, th- we would never do that. There's no way we would ever, you know, tamper with a foreign <laughs> election. So, like, that's just oh, completely no. <laughs> out of line, if you ask me. Yeah. And I mean, there's this, another similarity between Russia Gate and QAnon is like, when you get down to it, like the fundamental, like the impetus of the theories, uh, both are true. Fundamentally, <laughs> QAnon is real <laughs> with, with with some reservations. But yeah. yeah. Well, the thing is, is like it's the shit like that. It works. They work backwards. Like they get a tiny. They they see something that that doesn't make sense, or uh, they just they can't you know take the sort of like Occam's razor explanation where it's just you know whatever the most likely reason is probably true and they work backwards from that point and they look for things that aren't there and they come up with these insane fucking theories about things that and it's just it's so contagious like i remember when QAnon was first kind of coming around and that shit spread like fucking wildfire i mean and all it really is is astrology for facebook moms and shit but yeah, whoever's running it has to be having a blast. I bet it's a ton of fun to be Q, to be honest. Just <laughs> the thing like, for me is like I do this bullshit all day. I I knew for like a long time, like oh yeah, the Republicans are like conspiracy theorists. They have Alex Jones, like you know, like they're, they're yeah, writing was on it's the like wall. a Republican thing, but like it is absolutely not a Republican thing. It's no, a human no. thing. It's like like yeah. you said, it's like when your expectations for what reality is doesn't match what the actual reality is. You have to like work backwards to make a mm-hmm. make it fit together in your mind and going back to what you said about some of it being like true or whatever where QAnon really misses the mark i'm sorry where they where they really can sort of hit the mark is that like rich and powerful people absolutely are very very evil they absolutely are doing horrible things they absolutely do control the country but they they like to pick and choose which ones are good which ones are bad and it's of course uh, it always is, it's right-wing shit, always. Yep. And it also has this very sort of, like, religious, uh, you know, uh, sort of finish to it, which I'm not sure where that comes from. Yeah, I'm not sure really how they kind of synthesize that, but I'm not a QAnon scholar. Actually, yeah, going back to something you said, Chuck, that, you know, Bernie was offering a policy platform that most people largely agree with and would have been mm-hmm. something, would have been like an affirmative case to vote against trump yeah like what was what was universal health care polling at it was like right like 70 percent of people that were polled this is both sides had at least like some you know agreement with it and saying it was good yeah it was a fox news exit poll i think and it was like uh would you would you like a government run health care option so i think it was more like a public option or universal health care. I thought it was like even more like broad than that. I thought it was, was it? like, do you want to switch to a government-run health care plan? Yeah, I, I just don't remember if it was like explicitly way. like, do you want this to be it or do you want it to be available? Yeah. Uh, okay. But either way, it was like strongly approve or somewhat approve was, yeah, like 70%. 
Mm-hmm. It's been like that. <laughs> it's yeah, not, it has. yeah, for it's like five even, years yeah. at least. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And if and if the Democrats wanted to make sure this thing was in the fucking bag, if they would have ran on that and just that alone, and at least said like, "We'll try to do it. Like this is what we're hoping we can do. Like this mm-hmm. is part of an uh, what we want to do." We wouldn't. We we'd be doing this show last night because this would be in the fucking bag already. Right, and you don't. Yeah, you don't even have to like lie and say like we will one hundred percent accomplish this. Which like Bernie wasn't doing that either. He was like, this is something we all agree we want. So let's try to do it. Yeah. It's going to require a lot of like agitation from large numbers yeah. of people, in addition to like legislative efforts and the executive branch wanting it to happen. And it would come, it would come like incrementally too. Like I think people think it's like a fucking light switch. It's like, you know, turn it on and like, oh, we have, you know, well, people opposed to it think that, yes. Yeah, well, yeah, but it's 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 a great. What was Bernie's plan? He it was like every year he would like lower the Medicare age until like it was down right. to like thirty yeah. or like thirty five or something. Yeah, starting with kids and like then yeah. lowering it from the top. Yeah. Yeah, they would just lower it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's like that was, I remember that was a big thing in the primaries yeah. too. It's like, Bernie yeah. just wants to just take your health care away. It's like, yeah, but he's like, there's like an actual transition like built into it. <laughs> like, Yeah. So if the Democrats could have just run with that and provided that sort of nuanced structure to the plan, it's it's a slam dunk. I mean, you can run whoever the fuck yeah. you want. You know, put, put Pete up there, put fucking Tulsi Gabbard up there. It wouldn't matter. <laughs> That's the, that's but the Democrats ticket. missed the part where they just repeatedly screamed in your face that, that they do not want that. <laughs> right. Yes. And we know why. I mean, it's because they represent yeah. insurance companies. Like, yes, yeah. exactly. I mean, everyone fucking knows. It's like, uh, my God. Yeah. And I was also going to point to, like, ballot measures across the country, like, uh, specifically in Florida, which Trump won pretty easily. Uh, they passed a higher yes. minimum wage. Also with, like, pretty unreal. convincing numbers <laughs> in its favor. Yeah. Um, there was, like, different kinds of drug legalization or decriminalization in many states, uh, including, I believe, South Dakota legalized weed. Yes, sir. Yes, they did. So did uh, New Jersey, but that was kind of, that's been in the works for a while. I got a buddy that lives out there. That's yeah. I'm pretty sure it. that would pass on a ballot measure in literally every state in the entire Probably. fucking country. Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. It just needs to get on there. That's also a great way to drive voter turnout, by the way. Like, in states where they've had decriminalization or legalization on the ballot for marijuana, they've, they've had spikes of people coming to vote. Guess what wasn't on Joe Biden's platform? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this motherfucker said Come he cared on, about man. systemic racism and he wouldn't fucking <laughs> decriminalize weed? What the fuck do you think you're doing? <laughs> yeah. I just, I cannot believe how just in denial about what the democrats are the actual Demo- <laughs> like people who vote for these people think you know yeah and his mess of a son became like a little bit of a subject of the campaign and oh dude hunter biden has- rules i love hunter <laughs> biden now we're, like we're gonna have hunter biden talk for the next four years bro fuck dude <laughs> like hunter uh, dude hunter biden is so good because he just obviously he's joe biden's son and you know he's been involved uh with you know what have you whatever you decide you want to believe but like i do believe just, it's a criminal family oh yeah fucking a it is but he just he just exists i believe like it's he's soft so corruption not hard corruption there's a difference okay. yeah. <laughs> it's not technically illegal <laughs> he just he lives so like outside of the bubble and he's just so fucking like f- when i picture someone like joe biden's children uh, someone of like that's just spent his life in congress and and all that uh and you've got his son that's just like doing whatever the fuck he wants and like getting foot jobs and like smoking fucking crack. Like there's something that, that, that man is free. Like that man has, has nothing he worries about. Well, the reason I brought it up is cause like Joe Biden, he plays on like how much he tries to make it seem like he's an empathetic person in the way that he talks about his son's drug addiction, but he doesn't extend that to any other human being. <laughs> yes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, and I was going to uh, congratulate our friends at Radio Free SD for uh, legal marijuana in the state of South Dakota. Congrats, guys. You did it. Hell, yeah. Yeah, I might make some more trips to South Dakota here soon. Yeah, we'll, we'll go visit the Corn Palace or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah dude. Mitchell, Fuck baby. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wanted to touch on one more thing about um, Bernie before we go and move on to something else. Unless you guys had more you want to say about it. Do you think that... If the Democrats had managed to run Pete 
that this wouldn't be so close. <laughs> uh, I think Pete probably could have done better than Biden. I think Pete would have done better. Yeah. Because he actually can like talk <laughs> right yeah, right he has, he has some charisma like a sh- yeah. at least a scrap of it is more than what biden has and he would have had the kind of manufactured uh sort of Ob- obama ascendancy kind of yes. story yeah, yeah for sure he like, would he have been obama much more like, like <laughs> visible i think yes <laughs> yeah i don't know i don't know i don't know if i would rather have him <laughs> than biden actually in office <laughs> oh no i agree i mean i don't want to have anybody in office like that has ever been a choice (laughs) it's just i don't know i wish that things were different here i think everybody does but that's just not the case just imagine having Mm -hmm. like this ranked choice voting system where i don't know it's just a fantasy i guess but it seems to uh the people in maine seem to like yeah i was gonna say it's yeah yeah yeah. that's a start i suppose they had a a, like a really competitive senate race in maine right i haven't been looking at that one uh yeah susan collins held on to her seat actually oh okay i just saw that (laughs) well i guess rank choice didn't help that much Mm -hmm. uh you guys want to let's see i've got uh, some last minute campaign literature that i received on my door i think i think this showed up yesterday like on election day i think this is from the family friendly action pack Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> and this is supporting Teresa Greenfield, who, uh, a, as we can see, she... What a fucking fart in the wind she was. <laughs> hey, I called that one right. That was the easiest call of the election, was <laughs> Teresa Greenfield eating shit. Stella disagreed. Nah, <laughs> Dude, I'm just kidding. Uh, but like, you know how many radio ads I heard? You, you, know, you know what the ammo against her was on the radio? Because I, I have an old vehicle. I can't, like you know, connect my phone to listen to anything. I don't want to listen to the radio, so I end up listening to, like, a bunch of, like, sports radio when I'm driving around. And every ad that I heard about Teresa Greenfield was, like, she's a radical leftist. Like, she's going to take away your health care. <laughs> yep. She's going to defund the military. She's going to abolish the police. Her and Joe Biden are the farthest left candidates in American history, and they're going to take your country away from you. That's all it fucking took. The Democrats could have thrown twice as much money into her campaign as they did, which was a fuckload, by the way. Yeah. And they would have had the same result. That's just the, the S word. That's all I have to say is socialism. You know, the, the socialist fucking boogeyman. It's, it's McCarthyism again. Yeah. Which never ended. I've said that many times on the show, but and and it's like the Democrats see that shit and they're like, oh my god, we absolutely have to like push back against this. Like, right. we cannot just let this slide. We have to do everything possible to yes. prove that she is not that. Yes. It's like that's it's like so fucking backwards. Again, you have to provide an affirmative case for people to actually Correct. want to vote for your people. If you just serve outrage. It's not going to do a whole lot of good because most people, at least on some level, understand that Democrats and Republicans agree on the vast majority of issues in this country. It's just the cultural shit that we fight over. It's like when it comes to the fucking economy and it comes to the military, it's right wing shit. That's the only goddamn option you have. Yeah, it's just different flavors of it is all, but it's still the same yep, thing. Different cultural flavors yeah. of the same shit. You can only run so many fucking... If you're Teresa Greenfield or you're someone that's having to push back against that, you can only run so many fucking ads of you sitting at a warmly lit kitchen table in rural Iowa <laughs> with two old people you know, talking about the issues or you touring a farm or you, you know, hanging out with some small business owner. It's just... That, that's that's it. Like that's what they think that people in Iowa want. No, you have to. It's it's obvious that for years the 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 big strategy that's really propelled the GOP is making people afraid that their way of life is going to change. It makes it makes them afraid that this is going to go away. Things are going to change. Uh, you're not going to like it. It's going to be uncomfortable, and these people are going to be the ones to do it. But the, the the Democrats operate at a similar sort of from like a similar sort of position, but the kind of fear that they put into people has nothing to do with that. It's, it's, it, it's just, it gets back to Trump. It's like, well, you don't want, you don't want him. You don't want him. That's, that's all you should be afraid of. And I mean, that can only do so much for people. If, if that's your, your scheme is to like get people afraid and make them go vote. I mean, if you're a Republican and you're listening to these ads, you have a million reasons to go vote. Like you're in enti- you know, it's, this is getting taken. They break it down for you. They make you as, as afraid as you can possibly fucking be. And it works every time. And it worked this time. And it's going to keep working, especially in the state of Iowa. Yeah. Well, here's how Teresa Greenfield was being sold to me on my front door. Teresa Greenfield, a fighter for Iowa families. Oh, yeah. Never heard that before <laughs> on any campaign ad. You're going to fight for... Really? 
no shit. There's no candidates that are going to fight for Iowa families. Let's hear the rest. I, I, I'm, I'm in. What is she going to do for single people though, like me? Ooh, yeah. Sorry, families <sighs> only. Well, lost, mm. lost my vote. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. Raised on a farm during the farm crisis, Teresa has Jesus, the grit to fight for Iowa families as senator. By and then there's a checklist here. Creating new affordable huh. health care options for Iowa families and protecting okay. hospitals and care centers in our rural communities. Uh, that's a pushback right there. It's because one of the big things was she's going to close rural hospitals, and that's going to yes. be a byproduct of her socialized medicine. Yes, and I know Feenstra was pushing that against Schulten as well. Yes. He's going to close all the dang hospitals. Yep, same with, same with Finknauer. Like, Finknauer, the, 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 the big tagline for Finknauer was, too radical for Iowa. Oh, yeah, I saw a billboard outside of Cedar Rapids that said that yep. about her. <laughs> <laughs> guess she was, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I guess we didn't actually even bring that race up until now, but Ashley fucking Hinson won. <laughs> That's the woman from my TV. Yeah, I, I <laughs> yeah. feel like on our last episode, we really should have been smarter about that. Like, well, I, it's unprecedented for someone to someone on the TV to win. <laughs> yeah, that's never happened before. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. But the campaign uh, yeah. just seemed so pathetic. <laughs> like, everything they yeah, were putting yeah. out was, like, desperate and weird. I, I really, I don't know. I didn't think people would ditch Finkenauer after the derecho, but I guess they don't really give a didn't shit. I think so either. It's funny, there was that, uh, remember there was that Des Moines Register poll that came out the day before the election? Yeah, they had, had her losing by 15. They had her by, like, 50, yes. and everyone's like, no yes. way, no way, no way. And I was like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Like, that's awfully large to be a margin of error, you know? Like, yeah. that's... 15 points? Are you fucking kidding yeah. me? Yeah, that's the one that I got wrong. I was I was fairly certain that Finkenauer was, was going to be able to wrap it up because she's pretty popular in Cedar Rapids. I mean, at least around here, but obviously yep. I was wrong. Yeah, uh, and rural I, area. Yeah, I agree yeah. 100% about R- Rural people campaign. turn the fuck out. Yeah, mm-hmm. It's just, it, it seemed desperate. That's a really good word for it, but I think that you can't ever underestimate conservatives wanting to vote for... Yeah younger white blonde women (laughs) it's just you get the horny vote out you know you get the the new blood (laughs) vote out and it's just uh, yeah it's kind of it's funny that it's like an urban rural divide in this case because Hinson is so obviously like an Iowa City girl yeah not Iowa City but like a city in Iowa yes 100% I mean and Finkenauer was playing up her farm shit I like all the other Democrats that doesn't that doesn't matter though I mean Trump fucking Trump lives in a lived in a golden tower. <laughs> it had millions yeah. of dollars, and literal and then golden farmers toilet. were like, "Yeah, this is our guy." Like rural America is like, "Yeah, <laughs> this fucking this 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 guy from New York, this coastal elite millionaire who's been fucking contractors and you know blue collar workers that build his fucking uh, his his universities and his fucking golf course. He's been stiffing them for for decades. But this is our guy. This is the guy that represents blue collar America. Like <laughs> that does that shit doesn't matter." Mm-hmm. Number two on the checklist, uh, this is Teresa Greenfield fighting for Iowa families by fighting for a living wage and job training programs. So, Sounds good. Yeah, so Iowa workers have the skills and income they need to support themselves and their families. Good. What is a living wage? Could we put a number to that, perhaps? It depends where you live, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That that living wage, that, that, that phrase is, is such a trap phase. It is mm-hmm. funny because it's like, Sorry. you know, there's like websites where it's like you can put your annual income in and it tells you like adjusting for cost of living, like how much money you would make yes. in another yeah. city. Yeah, that's like, that's not real. <laughs> that's not how it works. Yeah, the the, the phrase living wage is it has no parameters at all. Like it's all subjective. And the last one is passing paid family and medical leave because workers shouldn't have to choose between caring for themselves or a loved one and losing their jobs. I agree. Yeah, me too. Was like the the GOP trying to like reverse FLMA or, or FMLA <laughs> or something? Has that been an issue that's been raised recently? I mean, obviously with COVID it has, but that was like part of the CARES Act. But like, was there something else regarding that recently that you can remember? Mm, I don't know. This little door hanger doesn't get very specific. Yeah. Interesting. I noticed she doesn't use any sort of words like uh, guaranteed or again any sort of numbers. So, right. what kind of <laughs> what kind of paid family and medical leave are we talking about? Who gets it and how much? It's too radical. 
And the other side, it is about Joni Ernst, so we've got a bit of a, an attack ad. This is like a reversible door hanger. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you get the, the good and the bad. Yeah, that's that, uh, <laughs> that, that Democratic fundraising hard at work, <laughs> spending, those, spending those dollars. The family-friendly action pack. They know what they're doing. Yeah. And it's got like a scarier action, font. So. Yeah. <laughs> scarier oh, font, man. scarier color palette. Have Iowa Democrats had the worst year of any Democratic Party establishment in any state? Like it has to be. Man, with that, with, <laughs> like with given this the, caucus, and the caucus, and yeah. then the, yeah, like, <laughs> the, oh my god! I mean, those people are awful. But oh my god! Yeah, if they lose a second district, this is worse than 2016. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Lobsack. Uh, Joni Ernst cashing in on Iowa families. Oh, so it's still about families, but now it's cashing in on Iowa families. <laughs> Uh-oh. Washington and the special interests changed Joni Ernst. Just look at her record. So I guess that implies that at one point Joni Ernst was great. She was good, <laughs> and now she's bad. <laughs> okay. That'll happen, I suppose. Ernst took hundreds of thousands of dollars from the insurance industry and voted to allow them to deny coverage to Iowans with pre-existing conditions. Which is objectively bad. Mm -hmm. Ernst took millions of dollars from corporate special interests and supported a $500 billion corporate slush fund, allowing them to fire workers and give themselves multi-million dollar bonuses. So where did you get your money for your campaign? <laughs> <laughs> Shh, don't worry about that. Those aren't special interests, they're just regular interests. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a big difference. I've always wondered what that actually, like special interests. <laughs> what does that even mean? Oh, uh, it's perfect. It's the perfect phrase. Uh, Ernst voted against requiring companies to provide paid leave, which would let working families take time off to care for themselves, a newborn, or a sick family member. Okay, so that's where the paid oh, okay. leave thing comes from. I think you're supposed to start with the Joni Ernst side and then flip it over. <laughs> Oh, well, but it's just it's, if no, it's just it's hanging from your door, like I don't know which way I'm supposed to read it. <laughs> yeah, that does not seem like great design. <laughs> no, the instructions were not clear at all. <laughs> they have footnotes on this, so I guess this is about an amendment to House Resolution sixty two zero one. So if anyone wants to dig into that, uh, apparently Joni Ernst voted against requiring companies to provide paid leave, which sucks, and she'll probably do it again. Because she won. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I don't think I looked at a single piece of shit that I got in the mail. I looked at a couple. The only one that I looked at is one that I got from some Iowa progressive pact or something. The only reason it caught my eye, which apparently it worked because this is how it was designed, is there was a big old smiling Bernie Sanders on mm -hmm. the... Uh, mm -hmm on it and then it was a quote from him telling me that i should go and vote for joe <laughs> biden because he's going to lead uh one of the most progressive revolutions in united states history um, clearly which i don't know if he actually said that or not i mean he might have who knows i mean we all knew this was going to happen so there's really no point in getting into it but mm -hmm. i just thought it was interesting that that they had something like, like they knew how incredibly popular Bernie Sanders was in the state of Iowa. And they're like, we need to have something for these. Like we have to, we have to hit all the, the we have to check all the boxes here. Like we have to hit these people somehow. We have to get them something. Somebody has got to do it. Cause yeah. the party's not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Instead of actually giving any sort of concession. Correct. Like what, <laughs> what was like the big, God, I remember back like after Bernie dropped out, like one of the big Joe Biden concessions was going to be like college uh, student, loan relief shit you haven't heard a peep about I, that i have not heard a peep about that for like five months <laughs> yeah <laughs> i forgot all about that to be honest with you yeah they're like that's that's gonna be what joe biden that's gonna be the one bernie sanders thing that he really is gonna take on the mantle but it's like <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, they formed all those like committees or whatever where people from the bernie camp and people from the biden camp they meet up and they come up with all these like policy compromises now that one might actually happen anyway just because banks are fucking losing money on people defaulting <laughs> yeah. which is probably mm. why that was like the thing that they chose as being like something that might be theoretically possible with their corporate donors <laughs> Right, they're losing the palatable. gambles they put on people's lives by loaning yeah. the money. <laughs> yeah, because I mean that's like a, I don't know, man. It seems like a bubble that's gonna pop. Like obviously, like this student loan shit is like it's unsustainable. Like, well, yeah, I yes. mean, 
most people can't pay them. <laughs> I would assume like, most you have to get a good job to pay those. <laughs> yeah, I would assume most people who are holding student loans haven't paid them for most of this year. Like, I haven't. <laughs> like I, I owe a few thousand still, and I haven't paid a dime since February. And if there's people just not paying all year, it seems like that can't <laughs> still function as it was before. Yeah. Well, I think that was part of the CARES Act, wasn't it? So, it was. Like, yeah. I assume that they probably uh, <laughs> fucking filled the pockets up yeah, on the back end. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> probably the only way they would let that happen is if they uh, didn't yeah. suffer for it. God, who knows? Like, I don't even know. Like that bill is just like. I mean, there's some good things in there, obviously, but like a lot of it is just corporate slush. I mean, obviously, but yeah, it's new. They're going to get plenty more of that. Like in, in Europe, they just the like say like, we're going to guarantee your payroll. Like you cannot fire anyone. We're going to like pay your payroll if you need it here. It's like, we're just going to give you money. <laughs> like there's no strings really attached or anything. Like we're not going to like, you can just fire as many people as you want, like whatever. But like, mm-hmm. we're just going to give you money. It's cool. I like it. So speaking of the CARES Act and COVID, earlier I was thinking about like how bad of a year this should have been for Trump. Yes. In terms of re-election. Yes. Possibly one mm. of the worst one of the worst years a president has had that I can remember since I've been alive. Like Yeah. I, a very yes. inhospitable election year for an incumbent, you would think. Yes. <laughs> he started the year getting impeached by the House covid broke out which has made this the worst year of probably most of our lives (laughs) uh everyone's losing their jobs people are getting sick and dying uh like two hundred fifty thousand people i'm overestimating a little bit but not by no i don't really think you are (laughs) no and that number is gonna keep going up i think we're at like 235 i think we're at 235 or so now we are 100% going to hit 300,000 yeah, by the end of the year. Uh, what else happened? Protests. Oh, sure. Yeah, protests. <laughs> right. Yeah, like the biggest uh, civil social unrest in 50 years. <laughs> yeah, and what did Biden yeah. do about that? <laughs> yeah. God, Other than he had... just like talk about property damage every single fucking time, unprompted. Uh, like up until fucking election day. Every time the cops murder someone, he's like... Well, rioting is not protesting. Do you give do oh you my fucking give god, a fuck about statement. anything? <laughs> uh, oh my fucking god! Ugh. I just he, he just Trump took a fucking he's taken a beating obviously his entire tenure so far, but like this year especially, it's uh, it's there's there is no no reason that the election should be this close. Like we should not be sitting here right now right. waiting for like a, a few thousand more ballots to get counted in two yeah. states. I made a bad bet out. in 2017. <laughs> I made a yeah. bad bet in 2017 with Chuck. It's going to like, pay though, I, probably, and like, but... Well, yeah, whatever, but... Still a bad bet. <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was a bad bet. I mean, like, I'm, I'm too optimistic about the... Like, I mean, it's been... I don't know. I've gradually gotten less and less optimistic. I at least like can change my like. I I was one of the Democrats in denial probably for well yeah up until probably like twenty fifteen twenty sixteen. Yeah, you're on your way to Jokerfication. So <laughs> oh, I'm let it happen. <laughs> yes, I've just been laughing in Take the crawl the Joker space. Pill. I've just been like absolutely giddy the last day or two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I woke up laughing this morning. It's just so fucking funny. <laughs> Just like open your sucks. eyes. <laughs> haven't read a thing yet on your phone. Haven't read a single headline. It's just knowing that today is going to be full of surprises. Yeah. Well, not surprises, but you know. <laughs> yeah. It's not what I expected, but it's also like so, you know, it's vindicating. Like I <laughs> I knew the Democrats were fucking failures and they deserve to lose because they refuse to embrace like any populist energy at all. Yep, And I guess even before uh, he was impeached, like the entire media and pop culture like hated him for his entire term, Yeah, which you would think would have some kind of cultural effect. (laughs) No, this is a thing I was thinking about earlier today where it's like Trump, he hates the same people that his base hates. And like the Republicans Mm. are smart enough if they don't hate the same people like they don't hate democrats because they work with them and their colleagues and their chums they have to at least pretend to but like right. democrats they don't see anything as like an enemy like there's oh, no enemies in together. politics heal the country they're Let's like 
There's too You're much not division. allowed to hate Republicans because that's like uncouth or something. And just it's like, because we disagree, we could still be friends. <laughs> it's just so absolutely bloodless and just like obviously just not going like to. It just doesn't work. They're like, cucked. Y- y- the whole party's y- cucked. Liberals it, are cucked, is what it, it is. It is. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we've just been beating that same drum this entire podcast. Yes, but yes, they've been watching, event, event they've been session. watching Republicans fuck their government, and fuck their country their entire lives, and they've gotten used to just sitting there and watching it happen and being completely fine with it and kind of turned on by it now, it seems like. Yeah, you're not actually allowed to hate Republicans. I fucking hate them. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, you can't you can't act like it's like a mutual feeling. I mean, like deep down, they hate your Republican. They, they hate your fucking guts. They they hate Democrats. They think you're fucking evil. Like they think you're the worst thing on earth. Like there's nothing worse to some of these people than a goddamn Democrat. Which they're probably right, but it, it's 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 based in something else. What was this? The is why they quote, fucking lose time and time again. Love people and hate institutions. Yes, no teeth. You didn't, Michael Brooks, say something like that. Yeah, I think it might have been Michael Brooks. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was, actually. Or, um, let your hate be pure. Ugh. That's another good one. <laughs> yeah, nothing pure, nothing is pure and, you know, has some sort of, like, wholesome redeeming thing about it is hate. <laughs> no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm talk, talking seriously. What's, like, what's that, how pure is your hate? There was, like, I think it was, like, a... I don't know, some teacher, like, lefty teacher who, like, would ask his students, like, how pure is your hate? And it, like, confused them, and then he, like, explained that's, like, you have to, like, hate injustice in yeah. order to ever solve it. Oh, um, Alexander Cockburn. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was thinking uh, Emperor Palpatine from <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> he said something similar. Let your, let your hate fuel you or something. I'm not sure about that one. I let the hate <laughs> flow through you. I think is what it yeah, was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, how do we feel about the future of the Iowa Democratic Party? I think we've pretty clearly laid that out yeah. so far. But I mean, they're. I mean, I said it right away. I was. It's not a swing state anymore. It's not a purple state with this record turnout and more people going to vote than ever before, and the results that we've seen. It's become very mm-hmm. obvious that I think we've known it the whole time that this. This is we live in a red state. I think that's that's the bottom line. That's all there is to it. I have a slightly different take where it's like I don't think that there's really any like cultural like significant cultural differences between Iowa and say like Wisconsin. It's just that for whatever reason we don't have we don't have a big city. Like that's really it's like just the rural urban divide more so yeah. than like red state blue state honestly. Um so what we need is more people to move We to need Des more people to move to Des Moines. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, all the people who, like, moved to New York City or, like, California who were originally from Iowa uh, need to come back. I think that, like, the, the key difference, though, is, like, in a state like Wisconsin, you can sort of campaign more on, like, manufacturing jobs, whereas around here, it's it's farms, you know? Yeah, I mean, Iowa's still got a pretty big manufacturing sector compared to, like, most states. That's true. But, I mean, it's the same playbook. I mean, you're right. Yeah, I, I just, I mean, I don't know. There's probably more reasons for it than that, but, like, I, I think of it more as, like, I don't know. The whole, like, red state, blue state thing is annoying <laughs> because, clear. I mean, like, the California, when I'm talking about California, the Prop 22 passing, which I think uh, yeah. most people assume was going to happen anyway, but it's, like... It sucks, though. It sucks. <laughs> yeah. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to trickle down everywhere because now it's going to be, like, yeah, the, the, every other state's going to do it. Actually, they're yeah. sp- specifically angling for a federal law to uh like enshrine i saw a tweet they called it the third way <laughs> so it's oh, like jesus <laughs> nice <laughs> yeah you can be like an actual employee or you can be a contractor but then we're gonna make a third way for fucking actually i don't know what the second i don't know either way it's funny <laughs> like they're like enshrining the idea of like fucking wage not even wage slave like you don't even have like you don't get a wage like it's just gig worker shit I mean, you do you do get a wage. Cut this. Uh, yeah, I, I've never done the job, and I don't really know how the pay works. But it's more that you don't get benefits. Like sure. that's the part that's fucked about it. And they're they're going to allow them to continue not providing benefits. Yeah. Well, leading up to the election, I was thinking, and this is something I've heard, uh, like Brianna Joy Gray mention on her podcast, and I've seen people talk about it on Twitter. I was thinking the left generally people who are further left than the Democratic Party, 
I felt that we should be trying to organize like a few thousand people to pledge to withhold votes from Democratic candidates unless concessions are made. Mm. And I thought that would be like probably, I guess, the only way we could like get anything we want out of these people. But now, as you've said, with the like record breaking turnout and it being clear that um, the people of Iowa have made the Democrats pretty irrelevant anyway, that seems like maybe not even uh, productive. So, yeah, I don't know what to do now. <laughs> uh, we post. We, we keep posting because we're posters. <laughs> that's that's it. We just post our way through. It's the same way we deal with everything. I would like to think that uh, if the Democrats did make concessions to the left, that it would be popular among people who are not just on the left. And that could potentially, I mean, like, it's so just sick that they have no concept of ever, ever providing any sort of like universal. It's always like Mm -hmm. mean tested, means tested shit where it's like people. And that just like fuels the divisive culture war shit. Like Democrats are 100% just as guilty of like, stoking like division the way that they say about republicans i mean Mm -hmm. not to the exact same extent obviously but they absolutely feed into the culture war shit yeah i mean there's been a lot of uh people on twitter like oh these i fucking hate iowa now (laughs) like all these people deserve what's coming to them and what it really is is a distraction from the economic issues mm-hmm. that undergird the cultural issues. Yeah. And I guess what we were getting at earlier is like if we were to pull these concessions out of them, like presumably that would improve their electoral results. But I guess the strategy of like withholding votes from them is not really necessary now because they're perfectly capable of losing uh, yeah. whether we vote <laughs> yeah. for them or not. Yeah. Yeah, that's baked into the plan for them. <laughs> Yeah, I, I guess, like, I just don't know how to make them listen. I mean, yeah, the absolute I, worst thing is if they take this, I mean, that's what, and that's what they're going to do. They're going to call this victory, like, a resounding victory. <laughs> and, like, it's obviously just, like, a fucking mirage. There's no mandate. Yeah, so I guess what we have to do is just make sure everyone knows. Everyone that we can reach has to know that this was not a resounding victory. It's not even really a victory. <laughs> It is a devastating failure. Joe Biden's going to be in the White House, and that's all you fucking get. Unfortunately, they're not <laughs> receptive to that either, though. <laughs> I, I guess. Well, I mean, just the people that that we can talk to, which are not like right. yeah. Democratic Party I know. operatives. I, I, there's a different way to approach it. I think often t- it's like too aggressive, where you're like, like you just want to shake people and be like, yeah. how do you like understand like the people that you are supporting, like? They're not supporting you. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. well, that's 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 the fear part. What they play on is that the other guy's bad. That's it. That's all yeah. you need to know. They're Republican. They're bad. They don't want what you want, but they do it in such a pussyfooted way. Yeah, they they don't want what you want, but also we don't want what you want that bad either. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, do you think we've uh, theorized enough? Applied enough analysis I guess. I mean, to this election? I could election? talk about this all night, but yeah, yeah. There's like 5,000 podcasts saying the exact same thing. (laughs) So thanks for listening to ours, I guess. I'm sure you've already heard a few other ones saying the same thing. We're the only one talking about Iowa, so. (laughs) That's true, yes. Only one, That's why you love us. (laughs) Iowa's only podcast. And we went into this with zero preparation, just rambling. (laughs) Mm -hmm. That's fine. I think there's some good points made. We have strong brains and... (laughs) <laughs> yes, the strongest, the best. You do, you uh, do I polished them. mine up before the show. <laughs> My brain is very resilient. Well, as we say goodnight, I would like to, of course, congratulate the only candidate in the entire election that we endorsed, uh, Jalen Cavill. Uh, congratulations. He is the new sheriff of Polk County, Iowa. Uh, Yay! He, he declared victory uh, <laughs> earlier today. So thanks. Fuck yeah. Uh, thanks for writing him in, everybody. And congrats to Jalen. Our, our new yeah Polk he got County more sheriff. votes than Kanye too didn't he? Uh, I don't know if it's more, but I know that he got a similar number of write-in votes in Polk County. Yeah, compared to Kanye's statewide vote total when he was on the ballot. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, so there was like three thousand people, uh, almost three thousand people, which I mean was like one percent of the vote, but still for a write-in that's for great. a write-in campaign. Yeah, I don't know, and that's why he's the sheriff now. God. Yeah, more power to him. That was incredible. <laughs> I uh, I need to get involved in local politics. I, I don't want to, but 
<laughs> yeah, me either. I just like I, I've been like on straight COVID mode. Um, just yeah, it's hard when you're my leave living the house, circumstances. Yeah. yeah, like it's just like I'm. I live with someone who takes immunosuppressive drugs, so it's like I'm very conscious about that. But like I don't know, I have a lot of energy that I need to like get out mm-hmm. <laughs> at, at this point. And I I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what to do in the future. You know, we'll see. Well, I'll be posting. And gaming. <laughs> yeah, I'll be posting. We'll keep doing the pod. You know, yeah, what are we going to talk about? Uh, we'll find shit. <laughs> we'll find plenty of shit. I yeah, I think it's uh, this is going to be actually increasing in relevance uh, <laughs> with a Biden presidency and Republicans running everything else. I think there's going to be plenty yep. to critique. I think we can continue adv- or advocating and agitating for an actual leftist representation in government in general local and national like i'm pretty sure we can keep doing that we can keep beating that drum mm-hmm. the story's just begun <laughs> everybody listening you should also continue beating the drum we're gonna have just a big old drum circle and that's that's gonna end the vietnam war <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, good night. oh geez oh jesus thanks for listening <laughs>